be honest now, you love the colour, don't you? It's called Apple Green. And I've done a little poll on my own Instagram. It's like 70 in favour, 20, oh no, maybe it's the other way around. A friend of mine has also sent me a photograph of a 1970s bathroom and compared the colour. I think it looks great. And the amount of people that have come up to me asking me about it would kind of back that up. So this is the revised facelift Q2. It's lashing rain, there's thunder. Not made of sugar. So some of the changes, they're subtle enough, like they've got blades over the quad, you can get them in three different colours. Little bit of cosmetic changes around the, the front, LED headlights on all the models. Uh, this one is a 1.5, 150 brake horsepower petrol engine. That is the one I would go for. The car starts at about 33 grand. If you want an S-Line badge on it and everything that goes with that, you're talking 38 upwards. And by the way, you do actually get LED indicators, but they don't sweep like a lot of modern Audis. And they're in the auto folding mirrors also. You've got these arches over, a uh, black strip runs the length of the car. It looks good and also those arches give it kind of a rugged uh, look. Nice roof line, as I mentioned, those blades that come down into the back of the car. Uh, ride quality for an S-Line on those alloys is spectacular. So I would stick with them if I were you and don't go too big. My back window is steaming up. Okay, so you don't get an electric tailgate as standard here in Ireland anyway. Reverse sensors down here will also add with the rear view camera, as you can see, covers the rain beautifully. Uh, the boot has got a really decent sized boot. It's 405 litres. That's a medium sized dog box and you can put that in and close the parcel shelf even with that in, in the boot. Um, also the floor, you can adjust that. If you don't go for the Quattro version, they will reduce the size of the boot. But if you don't get Quattro and you don't get spare wheels, which this car doesn't have, uh, you can raise and lower the boot. And actually it has little hooks to hold the shelf in place as you're trying to load things in. So a very, very decent sized boot of 405 litres. <sighs> it's very wet. In the back. Oh, it's a bit snug, but it's actually dry, so I don't care. No seat back pockets, no charging, no armrest. Head height is good though. Your windows go all the way down. So do you know what? I forget all the bad points of no USB charging. You can pay for those things. And as well as two Isofix back here, there's Isofix in the front. So three in total. And you can try lock these with the driver's control panel on the driver's door. Very handy. Oh my God. Right, thankfully the car has auto wipers, eh? So six speed manual gearbox, you can get an S-Tronic automatic. Uh, there's little storage areas here that you can pull this thing out and stick coins into it if you still use coins. You've got USB here, 12 volt under your armrest. You've got auxiliary, if you've got something like an iPod or something like that. Uh, very easy to use jog wheel with shortcut buttons to your nav and your map and your menus. Um, by the way, if you do want nav, well, you'll have to subscribe or use your phone. But the car does have CarPlay and Android, and you can set that up within the screen. It's not the biggest screen. Uh, these dials rotate to on and off the air, whatever way you want that. Digital cockpit is very nice. You can control different aspects of it. Even the glove box is usable. A very functional, a few shortcut buttons here. A lot of it controlled with your jog wheel. Generally quite easy to use. Uh, the plastics are good quality. But I suppose compared to more expensive Audis, you'd, you'd notice it. But if you were comparing this car to all the other cars that it would compete with, like something like the Ford Puma ST, the T-Cross and Volkswagen, then this feels like a Rolls Royce. With the price of cars in Ireland, it's going to be hard to look past the one litre petrol if you want a Q2. But take my word for it, the sweet spot is the 1.5, 148 brake horsepower TSI. It's the 35 TSI badge car and it has loads of clever stuff including the fact that it was shut down into two cylinder mode on something like the m50 and will deliver barely uh, over five liters per 100 kilometers at motorway cruising speed so it's a very economical car to run despite having uh, a nice six speed gearbox if you go for the manual plenty of torque and it just suits the engine you might think it's it's overkill but it suits the size of the car absolutely perfectly because you're never wanting, it's never struggling for power and it's also a four cylinder, so it sounds better. I wasn't expecting this car to be as one, engaging and two, fun to drive. And I'm sure that more powerful petrol engine has something to do with that. 
but it just handles very very well and it's a sporty little car to drive so i have zero complaints there it's not going to be as potent in the smaller engine version there also are two diesel engines you can get the two liter tdi with also 148 brake horsepower and that plenty of torque uh cheap to run very economical like serious mileage out of a, a tank of juice if you are thinking of diesel i'd imagine though the majority of these cars are going to be petrols just don't see why you'd be in a diesel one of these so stuff like the Volkswagen T-Cross would be a competitor. I did review that car a couple of years ago. If you want to have a look at it, it's up there on the top of the link. I am really, really impressed with how the Q2 drives. And I'd imagine it's well up there compared to a lot of the competitors in terms of driver enjoyment. Who knew? This is a cracking Q2 to drive. If you are considering something like this, something with a bit of a nicer badge, a bit of a nicer interior compared to stuff like the Polo and stuff, then I'd absolutely shortlist it. I'd even consider the green, but I'd definitely consider moving to Spain. Thanks for watching. I'm just gonna go in and get dry. <gasps>